When it comes to the number of confirmed cases or the death toll from the coronavirus, it's important to remember those numbers are underreported, especially in countries where widespread testing has been slow to roll out or delayed, like the US or Italy. The number of people infected with the virus could be 10 times that official number, which is why almost every healthcare professional is urging all of us to stay at home and avoid contact with others as much as possible. Dr. Emily Porter is an emergency room physician who ran the numbers using CDC data and came to the conclusion if nothing is done to slow this outbreak, no social distancing, no attempt to limit contact, no effort to slow transmission, more than 7 million Americans would die simply because of a lack of respirators. That means that 49 people out of 50 are going to die because we do not have the respirators and the ventilators should take care of them. That is scary. That should scare you. That should, that scares me. That should scare everybody who can understand basic math, including my second grader, that one in 50 are bad odds. So what that also means is that the doctors have to choose who that one in 50 is. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if, if you had to say, oh, I'm sorry, you have had cancer before, so therefore you're not, you don't have a perfectly clean bill of health, so you're not worth saving. Can you imagine saying, oh, I'm sorry, you're 80, and I've got a 30-year-old that needs the ventilator? And Dr. Porter joins us now from Austin, Texas. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Just start with the latest news that we've heard in the last couple of hours, uh, that President Trump has been very clear he wants to see some kind of return to business as usual, or as close to usual, I guess, uh, in a matter of weeks, not months. He's worried about the economy, even though it seems his health advisors are clearly not on board with this. Uh, this is what the president said earlier, listeners. If it were up to the doctors, they may say, let's keep it shut down. Let's shut down the entire world. Is it possible to fix the economy before you have this viral outbreak under control? You know, despite what the president says, can you do both at once? I heard, I heard him say that actually live today, and I was, I was, he's, he's not listening to the doctors. So I think the biggest problem is that we we don't have a unified response. Our country is so spread out, and it's he's leaving it up to the governors, and then some of the even mayors and the more local government is is choosing to be more. Uh, cautious. So our governor has not shut down Texas, but he said yesterday, county by county. So Austin Travis County is is going on lockdown tomorrow. So that helps Austin Travis County, but you can drive two miles and get to another county. So I feel like what doctors are saying is that it has to be unified across the board. If we just do it piecemeal, little by little, then things are going to keep spreading. The idea of, of flattening the curve is that you have everyone in a unified response at once, you can stop the in infectivity that keeps happening and not go past your healthcare capacity, which is not just ventilators. My video is mostly about ventilators because that's the thing that's really scary, but also ICU beds, nurses, doctors, gloves, masks, everything. And that's going to increase. And, and this, this um, idea of a uniformed approach and all or nothing, we're all in it together kind of thing, you made this very clear in that YouTube clip that you posted. And here's part of it. Listen to this. This is about everybody coming together for the common good that we want a future for our children. And it's two weeks, man. It's like two to four weeks. And I hope that if you care about anybody other than yourself, including especially these 47 million Americans, that you will also do the same and just not complain about it and just do it because it's what we got to do. Yeah, it's what we got to do, but if not everyone's doing it, when does that two-week period begin or will that four-week period begin and that, when does it that's end? The, that's the problem. So the president announced something called this, you know, 15 days, and this is in general saying 15 days to flatten the curve. The problem is, is that nobody's enforcing it. So I, I've i been social distancing my children. I have, I'm a mom of four. Um, my husband's on the front lines in the ER. Um, and, you know, we're staying home. We're, we're watching the fire burn at our house. We, we literally watched the fire burn the other night. But when I did go to grab a few groceries on Sunday, there were people in Walmart, like in the toy aisle, what do you, you know, <laughs> buying yeah. garden shrubs and it, it looked them. like, and so there's no, there's no uniform response. It, that two weeks, who knows? It hasn't started yet, in my opinion. In my house, it started. But in my county, it hasn't started. In my state, it hasn't started. And certainly across the country, it hasn't started. And, you know, I just posted on my Twitter account, which is at Dr. Emily Porter, MD, uh, a side by side of the graphs of Italy, the number of deaths per day 
and the number of deaths per day in the U.S. And if you compare those side by side, we're trending worse than Italy right now. There, there's actually started going down the last mm -hmm. couple days. The number of deaths per day from coronavirus in Italy has actually gone down the last two days. But that's because they, they had a lockdown. I mean, it was beautiful. I saw them singing and, you know, to each other out their windows on their porches and things. It was beautiful. But they did that. And now we're seeing their their cases trend down, their deaths trend down. Same thing with China. But we're still trending up. And we're, just, we're like eight, eight days into this or this, yeah. you know, 50-day period. I, I don't think it's not <laughs> yeah, and this is the thing, that, to, just explain this to me though, the official numbers we're seeing in terms of cases and death toll, it's a snapshot of where we were though, right, 15 days ago. Can you explain why that's the case and what it actually means? Yeah, so we're, I think we just started testing people. So I know we're, you know, my sister Katie Porter, the rep from Southern California about a week and a half ago, she was with her whiteboard and she got the head of the CDC, Dr. Redfield, to agree that everyone in America could get tested without financial issues, right? So it's like $1,300 to get tested. The government's going to pay for it. The problem is where are the tests? Where are the tests? So my, at our hospital, we're being told that uh, at hospitals around here that only people who have these exposures can get tested. Well, nobody's been on a cruise in two weeks. So those questions, um, when you go in, I got an allergy shot a few days ago. They asked me if I'd been to China. They asked me if I'd been to Italy but they didn't ask me if I'd been to the grocery store with everybody else, because now we have community spread. And so these numbers are, are, I think that the number of patients are actually gonna explode as we get more and more tests made available to us, but it's really the number of deaths. And to be honest with you, I know a lot of people who have needed testing, uh, I won't name names, who can't get it because they're, they're not meeting these criteria that again, the threshold for who requires a test also varies hospital to hospital, city to city, state to state. The CDC has their requirements and then some hospitals have different requirements. So like the hospital near where I am, they were doing drive-through testing. It, just anyone who wanted to get tested, they ran out of supplies in two days. Two days they ran out. So now they're saying, well, we're only testing people who are flu negative and you know who don't have influenza because you can't possibly have both. You, you can actually, but they're saying if you're flu negative, then we'll test you. Well, guess what? The reagent that you need to test people for flu is the same as what you need to test for coronavirus. So they ran out of the reagent to test for coronavirus. They've got all the tests, but they can't run them because they've been testing all these people for flu. So it's just so chaotic. We need a unified yeah. Yeah. leadership. Dr. Fauci is wonderful. He's trying to give us recommendation, but the question is who's listening? And if well, you're listening, it's funny. Yeah, we're out of time, uh, Doctor. But yeah, um, we've needed some kind of direction and leadership for a while now, and it just sort of hasn't materialised. I guess we can hope that it will one day. Uh, Doctor Ellen Porter, thanks for being with us. Thank you.